This is Corbin Cassius for IFL TV. We're at the um, Fox and Groves here. This is the post fight. It's not the press conference, but I'm in the dressing room with George Groves. We've never got Paddy Fitzpatrick. Paddy, it, it must have been, a, from your end, a, a very disappointing night, um, considering the start George made, what happened during the fight, and to finish the way it did in your, in your perspective. Yeah, of course it's disappointing. You put, uh, you put, um, not me. I didn't put everything I have into no. it. George put his I whole meant as a team, into sorry, it. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm disappointed, yeah. obviously. But what I'm trying to say is, George has. He's, he's a man who put everything into this. People said before the fight, well, he really doesn't have nothing to lose. And he used to say to me in the gym, they're crazy. What do you mean I have nothing to lose? I have to lose my unbeaten record. Got to lose everything I worked for from when I came into a gym as a kid to this point. And I understand what people meant as well, if you lose to a champion you'll get another chance. But they don't understand the mentality of a fighter. The mentality of a fighter isn't thinking about another chance. The mentality of a fighter is that he wants that chance he's been given. Not the next one. It's like, I ain't got nothing to lose, I lost this, I'm going to get it again. It meant everything to him. And so when it means everything to him, and it gets taken away, in my eyes, unprofessionally, um, and by that I mean the referee is in there not to get emotionally attached to a fight. He's in there to be the police of that fight. He's in there to know the history of both men, to understand what he's dealing with. And I think a referee at that high level of a fight, instead of believing what's said in the public about a granite chin, one second, a yeah, granite sure. chin and a, and, a, and a glassy chin, that if you watched their career fights, he would say that George got hurt in one fight, badly, but one fight, and never again. And then he'd have that information in him. But Carl got repeatedly hurt. And afterwards, when I said to him, how could you stop that fight like that? He said, George was hurt. And I said, but Carl was repeatedly hurt. But in his mind, it was, he's got a good chin. Then George got hurt. Oh, George got a glass chin and be saved. I will reserve full judgment, I said, until I see the video tomorrow. I'm not going to disrespect the referee, but I do have my opinion. I think the referee disrespected himself and his position by not doing it correctly. All right, but what, what you said there about is you're, you're assuming that that's the reputation that you know the referee has into thinking, oh, hold on, Carl Foch has got this iron jaw. Oh, I'm and assuming. Etc. You're assuming. Yeah. So just tell me why the referee would stop it. It, it must be part of you that understands why the referee if he's in a position to think that George was in trouble and yeah. Yeah. why he would stop it. Right, but I had, when the referee was announced, George's lawyer sent me through the names of the officials. And when he sent through the, the name of the referee, I thought, Howard Foster has made quite a few decisions lately that people have gone, eh? Now, people don't have to take my word. This is on TV where people have said that shouldn't have been stopped. That shouldn't be stopped. One of them, I believe, was only a few weeks ago or a month or two ago. So, he, but I thought to myself, okay, he's, he's shown to be very, very classy referee. He's shown to be a top quality referee at times, but then other times, all of a sudden, show the complete other spectrum by jumping in too soon. But I had a choice as a coach. If I, if I make... If I say, okay, we don't want him the referee, we want another one. I then have no control if they shift him and put him in as a, as a judge. Now I have a man who I've asked not to be the referee in as a judge. Maybe he has a bad taste in his mouth. So I thought, okay, he has been a good referee at, at times. Let me appeal to that. So in the rules meeting, I said, please, this is a world title fight. These are two men fighting for a world title. I would like them treated as such and that they'd be allowed to fight and he said no problem when he came in earlier to speak this is the thing i have had with quite a few people in official official circumstances over the last few days i'm here to protect my fighter i'm not just here to develop him or to prepare him for a fight i'm also here to protect my fighter and anything I, i'm here to serve him i'm his servant when, when i'm getting him ready I must do everything within my ability and power to be able to do that. And when I ask questions of officials, which I am entitled to, I should be given that due respect and then calmly answer it. Not go, listen, don't worry, we'll take care of that. 
No. Answer me. I'm a man talking about respect. Talk me back to respect. You're in a position not where you're in charge of boxing. You're in a position where you're supposed to be in charge of the health of the fighters. There's a difference there. That means we don't work for the board. We don't work for officials. They work for the fighters. And then we work for the fighters. Everyone in this game works for the fighters. So when, I, when he came in and I said, please, I'll say again now, these are two world-class athletes, this is a world title fight, please treat it accordingly. Yeah, yeah, I got it, don't you worry, I got it. Well, he didn't get it. Because if he'd have even listened to what I said, he would have thought and been a bit more wary. He didn't, he gave me no time. He just heard me move my lips and chose to ignore me, I feel. Um, do you think the next step is to try and push for a rematch? Is that the next step? I will give you my honest opinion on this, and it's not me trying to be ignorant, and it's not me trying to be uh, sell the next one or be disrespectful. Carl Froch has got full respect for me. He had before the fight, and he probably has even more respect <coughs> as a fighter after this fight because he was losing clearly. He was getting hurt clearly not in one round he was getting hurt round after round he was getting hurt with big shots now i don't think i think directly after the fight then he let himself down as a man because when george went over george was the one who was winning george was the one that got stopped unfairly so george could have been the one to kind of throw the little hissy and when he comes over and think I got away with that to shake George's hand, George yeah. ignore him. No, he walked over to shake Carl's hand and Carl didn't want nothing got to do. Now he did come back later. Great, sign of a gentleman. He's come back, he sorted that out. But there's another matter. There's a fight there with Perez and the other heavyweight that have been put into an induced coma. Yes. I thought in the seventh round when I was watching that, I thought it doesn't matter that that fight's still competitive. That man shouldn't be in there. I felt at the time, no, I didn't know at the time, I felt that man should be in there, he's getting hit way too often and regularly. I honestly believe that the rematch, if I, let's take it he's healthy, the rematch should be done. Carl has said, let's do it. If he honours what he has said like a man, then he will stand by that and give George the option to rematch. But personally, from a health point of view, I do think that he should get fully checked talk with his family and make an honest decision with his ego to the side because if he has to finish his career on that I hope he allows his ego to do that because what I wouldn't like to see I don't care how much money is involved and I don't care if it gets him his belts what I wouldn't like to see is him get back in there and get very badly hurt and I do believe that him and George fight again George with the game plan for me personally that I believe I had George <coughs> stop him in three to four rounds of a, a Bute style fight and I don't want any man being hurt in this it is a sport it's a dangerous sport but it's a sport all right Paddy listen uh, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV um, yeah it's been like I said a, a strange night an interesting night it's been a disappointing night for you know for you and yeah I would, would like to see it again so if, it, if that's the way it is then if that's the way it is, and I think if the proper health checks are, are put in, yeah, okay. because if I, if personally, from my point of view, I will publicly, if the rematch is made, I would be publicly wanting the board to make sure that he has to go through certain checks first. Okay. I think it's the only, I think it's said, uh, because money can't come over a man's health, that man was badly hurt. In the round that George got stopped, or in the round previous, George actually hurt him with a jab. So. What I don't want, what I wouldn't like to do, is see his close, so say, okay, I, I said that probably wrong. He's close, people around him stroke his ego by going, show it next time. I'd like yeah. people to think about this, get checked. He's done everything that he could in this sport, make sure he's healthy. And then if he is healthy, honour what he said and give a rematch. If not, he's got the respect of the British public. I know not tonight, but they're hanging what the referee did on him, which is a little bit unfair. All right, Paddy, thank you very much thank for talking you. to us. And I'm sure we'll speak soon. God bless. Good and Cassis, Paddy Fitzpatrick. Thank you very much.